Today I'll be showing you how to create a YouTube thumbnail, how to cut out your face and put a heading on it, and how to do that in Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo is just $50 all in, and you'll get all the upgrades, you'll never have to pay any more, and it's just almost just as good as Photoshop, which is much more expensive. Please don't forget to like the video or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Below this video, there's a link, of course, to Finity Photo, as well as to my free courses on online business. Here are some examples of what I would say are good YouTube thumbnails. This is from Nick Nimmin's channel, very successful channel with a half a million subscribers. If you want to grow an audience on YouTube and you're putting out advice, people obviously like people's faces. They tend to identify with your face, rightly or wrongly. Usually there is a face on a YouTube thumbnail, so you immediately know it's this guy is going to be talking about this subject. And you'll see with these thumbnails, that they tend to put the face on the right hand side and then very very simple headline on the left hand side with block sans serif type. Another thing to say about the thumbnail is that the minute count, the time of the video tends to be in that bottom right hand corner so make sure you don't put anything important there. Another thing to say is the headline should have space above and below it and that's because if you share in other social media like Facebook or LinkedIn they have a slightly different size and the thumbnail can be cut off a little bit in the top of the bottom so it's always great to have that headline with room to breathe around it so it's easily visible. Now there's no easy way of doing this but you're going to have to take some photos of yourself and you just got to look stupid and smile and look one way, look the other, look happy, look sad, look surprised. And then in the end, you'll go and use the one that you did first of all. And all we really need is the head. We're going to have to cut this out. And there are a number of ways of doing this. First of all, you're going to get the layers palette up and it's always a good idea to just make a copy of that layer. Command J copies the layer could have got layer duplicate selection. I'll show you a few ways that you can cut out the head. First thing you can do, this won't always work, but if the background is always nice and constant, you can use the flood select tool. In Photoshop, it's called magic wand. The idea is to pick an area of the image that is all reasonably the same color. So there's an example where you can do it. And then you just delete it and go around like that. That's not a very good way of doing it. But the best way is with the selection brush tool. So you click that in the toolbar, make sure it's on add and make sure it's snap to edges and make sure soft edges is checked as well. And as for the width, you can control the width with the slider here or you can use the open and close brackets like that. The benefit of the brush selection tool is if you click and drag, it will snap to edges as we've checked that there. And therefore it will go to the edge and you can delete and the edge will be soft as well, which is great for cutting out. Click and drag. Click and drag and you can see it's getting it more or less right. Small bits one at a time. This is the only bit that's going to cause us problems. This would be another way you can cut out areas of photos and this gives you the most control and that's to use the pen tool but it takes a little bit of time to work out how to use it. But I'll click there, just click once there and then click and then drag to get a curve and then click back onto the anchor point if you don't want it to continue that curve. So click and then drag, click and then drag so let's just go around all that bit. Bit of clicking and dragging there and then join up there. You turn that path or curve as they call it into a selection by clicking the selection button there and delete. 
and there we have the cutout. So let's go file new or command N to make a new document. We're full web. So if we click that 1280 by 720, 72 DPI, that will be more than enough for a YouTube thumbnail. So all we have to do is select all, command A, copy, go back into our canvas and paste. And there I am. Even more embarrassing, I'm going to have to make myself even bigger. Many things you can do to improve your face. Field blur does make things better. A little select usage of the dodge brush. You dodge to lighten areas and you can either lighten the mid-tones or the shadows or the highlights with an opacity of 25. You can maybe not go too far on this but you can just brighten up the eyes and the teeth. Okay so let's put a layer behind that that's black so we'll in the layers palette we'll add another layer and we'll drag it down beneath that and then we'll select all and edit fill and let's choose a black there we go okay so there's the headshot now we're gonna go into the typography we go down here to the artistic text tool let's click on that and then we'll just click and drag to get the more or less right size and we're gonna go work from home okay just start typing and then select all command a to put it in caps first thing to do let's put it in white just so we can see what we're doing and uh, let's choose a typeface. Of course you can use impact, that would be the sort of thing we're looking for. Resize it, but I'm gonna try and find something a little bit better than that. So I've got Helvetica new extra black condensed. Okay, let's double click on that and type out the rest from we really want to close up the line height for that and that's over here the font size is about 220 so the line height maybe have to be 200 180 that's it and let's center all that text together okay that's looking quite nice it's gonna to have to come a bit smaller though don't want to stretch it out too much that let's copy that and then paste so we've got another box exactly the same type style and let's type entrepreneur did I spell that wrong and we can stretch that this way and that way and let's use that effect of putting a box behind the type so let's click the rectangle tool and just click and drag behind that type and let's fill it up with red and as you can see, the rectangle is below the word in the layers palette. So I can move my head a bit. Okay, so I want to say as a, just between those two bits of text. So again, let's copy this one again. Holding down option there. Select all and up. Push this up to the top. Try that in yellow now. Oh, it's as an, isn't it? And that's got to be really small. Actually, we should do working from home, and that will fill that space up a bit better. I'm going to put the Azan in white and put a yellow box behind it. Let's make that black or red. Now we want to select those, group them together, Command G, and then we can rotate this. Or should we do how to? Is this going to work? Is that any better? Okay, I think that's it. And then we can move this in that space there. You get the idea. So what you have to do now is an export. I always do the command option shift S for that. And then just choose JPEG and export. And then you can upload that as your YouTube thumbnail. So easy peasy, I hope you enjoyed that video about how to make a YouTube thumbnail with Affinity Photo. There's a link to Affinity Photo in the description as well as a link to all my free courses on online business. Please don't forget to like or subscribe. My name is Rob Coven, I'll see you in the next video.